This tutorial will teach you how to create a very simple pause function in Unity. So I've created a 2D project here and you can of course create a 3D project if uh, that's what you want to do. So for demonstration purposes I have just added a background to my scene here and then I have a UFO here which is going to be the sprite that is going to move around on the screen because I'm going to add these sprites to the screen and make them move back and forth and when they move back and forth I'm going to apply the pause function so that we can see that our game is actually pausing. So first of all we need to add our UFO to our game and uh, we need to create a script to make this UFO move before we can actually pause it. So I'm going to go to my asset folder and I'm going to right click, press create and then I'm going to write C sharp script and this is just going to be an enemy. So when you've done that you need to double click on it and I just need to check if my settings are correct. Yes. So when you've added the script, you can open Visual Studio or Mono Developer. And when your script is open, you need to give the enemy some speed so that it can move back and forth. And I'm just going to say public float speed. And then I'm going to add a function here that makes it move. So I'm going to say transform.translate. And then it needs a vector for moving also going to make a public vector free here called direction and it's going to be move like direction multiplied by speed times time dot delta time so this direction here is going to decide the uh, uh, direction of the enemy what direction it's going to move in and this line here makes the enemy move in the direction that I'm setting from my inspector and I'm applying the speed here and multiplying by a time to delta time so that my movement is frame rate independent. Then I'm going to make sure that my enemy starts moving in the opposite direction uh, when it gets outside the screen bounce. So I'm going to make a void on became invisible. And this function here is called every time the enemy gets out of bounds uh, of the screen. So if this enemy here right here moves all the way to the left here this function is going to be called and I'm just going to change the direction so it moves back in the other direction so I'm going to say direction multiplied by minus 1 so this will multiply the vector 3 with minus 1 which means that it will go in the opposite direction so this is just the scene setup so I'm going to take my enemy script and apply it to my UFO and this one is going to go negative on the x-axis so if I play this game okay, I need to give it a speed of course so let's say 4 speed if I play this game move to the left and when it gets out bounce it will bounce back and move to the other side and the same goes for the other direction here you need to make sure that um, your camera, your scene up here has the same view as your um, window down here because uh, on became invisible um, is countable for all cameras so if I would do like this and my enemy moves to the side well then it's not going to be invisible because it's not only invisible here it needs to be invisible for this camera up here so if I would do like this um, it would work because it gets outside bounds of this camera here as you can see now it turned around because it got to the edge of this screen and now it turns around again because it gets to the edge again so all your cameras count on in, on became invisible. Uh, just a little note. So now we have an enemy that moves. We're just going to duplicate this a couple of times. So we have them moving all over the place here. Have one here and let one start here on this side. And let this one start on this side for example. And this one might move in the other direction. And then we're going to duplicate one more. And we're going to have one moving up here. So instead of moving on the x-axis, we're going to have one in the y-axis. Then we're going to duplicate one more. Just going to put it here. And I'm going to have it moving negative on the y-axis. So what I did this was to duplicate all my enemies. 
Um, so one of the, some of them goes up and some of them goes to the side and everything. So we have some movement here, so we can actually see our pause function works. So if we play our game, you'll see that they go in all kinds of directions here, up and down and cross, um, and they're crossing each other um, all the time. So now we have our game, and now we can actually create the pause function, and it's very simple. We need to create a new script, C# -sharp script, and call it game manager. This is how I usually like to do it. I like to just create a game manager to manage everything in my game. And then I'm going to create a new object by going to my hierarchy here, clicking create, create empty. I'm going to rename this to game manager. And I'm just going to take this game manager script and apply it to it. So if I double click on my game manager, I'm going to make a boolean here. Uh, private bool called paused. This one decides if the game is paused or not. Then I'm gonna create a public void called pause game. And pause game is basically gonna reverse this paused function. So uh, this pause boolean. So it's gonna be equal to pause equals paused. So if the pause, if the game is paused, and we call the pause function again, well then it's going to unpause it. And if it's unpaused, then we're going to call the pause function. Then it's going to pause it because we're using this negation um, operator here. So it's going to have the opposite effect. This is basically the same as saying if paused equals true, then paused equals false. And then we would make another if statement that if Paused equals false equals false. Well, then we should do the opposite in here. Equals true, for example. So all this is avoidable because we just use this little function, uh, this this line of code to make it the opposite of what it was already. So this paused here should actually um, decide if our game is paused or not. So we can make a private static game manager instance because we're going to make a singleton and a singleton is a way of accessing um, one class from all other classes and accessing everything inside it and we assure there's only one instance of that class in our game um, the part about the instance is not that important in unity because we work a little different in unity than we do in normal uh, programs but this is the design pattern called a singleton so we will have access to this um, from our whole game because our point is that we want to go to our enemy here and we want to be able to say enemy sorry we want to be able to say game manager dot and then be able to access the pause function to see if we're paused or not and to do that we need to make a public uh, static uh, property for this so you can either right click on this refactor and encapsulate field or you can write this code yourself if you don't have Visual Studio public static game manager instance so you can get rid of the set function here and then we need to set the set fu uh, get function so if our instance is null if it doesn't exist then we need to find it and set it so that we can return it so we need to say instance equals game object find object of type and then we need to find the game manager so that this instance here is actually referencing the game manager in our game so that we can access everything in it so this is what this does so that we can go through this instance and access everything inside that is public we can basically just delete those two so now I'm able to go into my enemy and say if game manager dot instance because I just made it public dot host so now I can just access the post game of course and need to be ac able to access the post variable here um, so right here we have this private boolean that is paused and I need to make a f um, property for this so that I can also access that from inside my enemy so I need to right click on it refactor and encapsulate field so we basically only need to be able to get it so just delete this 
so you have a boolean um, a property here and if you don't have Visual Studio you can write this yourself again so now because I made this public uh, boolean here and notice this one is private so I can't access it from other classes but this one is public so this makes me able to access it from other classes um, so I can say instance dot post there we go so if my game manager instance isn't paused I need to make, put this negation f in front of it well then I all my enemies are gonna move but if it, it and, and if, if the game isn't pa is paused now well then we were not able to execute this code anymore so because it's public we are able to access this and because this one is static we are able to access game manager dot instance notice that we can't say game manager dot paused here because post is not static. When something is static, you can access it right away on the on the class level. Because if I would change this from static to non-static like this, well then I'm going to get an error because I can't say game manager dot instance dot instance. See, it it doesn't exist anymore because it's not static. So we're going to make this static again. Yes. So now we have our post function. We are able to. Um, go into our enemy here and say if our game manager isn't paused then we want to move our enemy and if it is paused then we are never gonna execute this line of code so we need to set up some functionality that are gonna pause our game so in our game manager actually we're gonna write void update and then we're gonna write if input get key down key code dot p so if we click the p button then we're gonna say pause pause game so this p button can pause and unpause the game now let's go back to our game let's run our game and if I press the p button then my game is paused so if I let go P button well then my game is not paused anymore so every time I click the P button it's gonna pause or unpause my game just like this so if you wanna create a button in your game that uh, actually does this for you you can just go to create go to UI and click button then we need to find the button somewhere it's right here just gonna place it about in the middle and we can rename this button by opening it up go to the text field here and rename it to pause game just call it pause actually so to call the function that is pausing the game you can click on the button here and then go to the plus and then you have an unclick event for your button and this unclick event needs to call this pause game function on your game manager and to access that you need to take the game manager and drag it to this empty slot here and when you've done that and you open this up you can see that the game manager is right here that's the script because you can see all the scripts that are attached to this game object you just added so if you open this function go to game manager and then you find the function called pause game when you've done that well then this button is gonna execute the pause game function so play your game again and now all the UFOs here are moving just zoom in so they get invisible just like that so you can see all the UFOs here moving back and forth and if I press my pause button then they're all paused and if I press it again then they unpause so this is basically how you can make a very simple pause function in unity so when you do this you should just make sure that every time you made a new script then everything inside update should be encapsulated in an if statement that said if game manager that instance paused so all your player functionality all your enemy functionality everything should just go into this so you're sure that every time you pause your game well then nothing is gonna move and nothing is gonna count yes, that's it for this tutorial thank you very much for watching um, if you wanna support me then please um, click on the link in the description below and become a patreon because if you do that, well, then you can support me and help me make more tutorials. <clears throat>
Um, and if you become a Patreon, you'll also be able to get every single project that I've made and every single project that I'm going to make in the future. So it's going to be um, easier for you to get everything that I'm making because you can just go to that page and download everything, um, all code example, all sprites and everything. Yes. Again, thank you very much.